true slime molds are a group of single-celled macroorganisms that are interesting for a variety of reasons. But today, specifically, we'll be looking at how the slime mold moves around its environment by simulating its motility patterns and looking at some of the applications of these features. In a way, this simple organism can be seen as dumb. It doesn't have neurons or a brain. However, it can imitate things like complicated power grid or transportation network systems. In 2012, researchers placed bits of food on a petri dish and allowed the slime mold to grow. Little did the slime mold know that those points of food were simulating centers of population around Tokyo, and the slime mold actually replicated the Tokyo subway system that had taken engineers and computers years to develop. In 2015, researchers found this idea fascinating, and so they built a computer simulation to connect nodes just like the slime mold does. So today we'll be taking a shallow dive into some of the features of how the slime mold moves. The two things that I'd like to simulate here is first, the fanning behavior of the slime mold. This usually occurs at high nutrient conditions. The slime mold is just exploring its environment, trying to find a new food source. And then the second motility pattern I'd like to simulate is the hunting behavior or the node connecting behavior. And this occurs either at low nutrient conditions or once the slime mold has already found all of its food sources and it needs to connect the network in an efficient way. So to simulate the fanning behavior, we'll take Conway's Game of Life as our platform. So Conway's Game of Life is a very infamous uh, computer science simulation that takes a very simple set of rules and demonstrates that emergent phenomena can evolve from those simple set of rules. The rules that we'll be using for this fanning behavior is that each cell in this matrix that we create must have two, three, or four neighbors in order to grow. Additionally, the cell must pass a 70% chance of growing. And then finally, a growth cannot occur where growth had previously occurred. And so from these three very simple rules, we get this diverse and complex fanning behavior as seen here. The fanning behavior is strikingly similar to in vivo studies. And just as sort of a side note, the green circles that you see are where growth had already occurred and the blue circles are where new growth is occurring in that current time step. So that's the fanning behavior. It looks really cool. So now let's move on to the hunting behavior. So this begins with a food matrix. We need to have some sort of stimuli on our board to encourage the growth in a particular direction. And the way that we do this is we simulate the food points with a Gaussian distribution. So the closer the slime mold gets to the food source, the higher motivation the slime mold has to grow in that direction. And this will help us simulate the growth towards certain points or nodes in the network. Similar to the fanning behavior, we have another very simple set of rules. In this case, each cell must have one, two, three, or four neighbors in order to grow. In this case, it must pass a 30% probability to grow in uh, a given cell. And every time step, the entire matrix and every cell in the matrix is scanned for the best direction for growth. And then a single cell on every time step is chosen that has the highest food gradient uh, and growth in that direction occurs. So this hunting motility looks pretty similar to in vivo studies as well. In fact, when we place two inoculation sites for the slime mold and three food source sites randomly on this grid, we find that 55% of the time the slime mold is able to touch all three nodes in the network, 35% of the time it only gets to two, and then only 10% of the time it can only manage to get to one of the food sources. So with these simulations I've shown that you can demonstrate emergent phenomena with very simple lines of code, however there were a couple of issues and improvements that could be done. The main issue that I ran into was during simulating the hunting behavior. So every time that the slime mold found one of the food sources, the entire food source matrix had to be rewritten. And what this leads to is every time that I would want to add a single new food source, it would take about twice as much code. So it ends up taking exponentially more code to add a linear increase in food sources. So this is not efficient code and I'm sure there's a better way to do this. 
Secondly, both the fanning behavior and the hunting behavior could be incorporated into one code that would simulate something much closer to the in vivo studies. We're sort of, you know, separating out the two different simulations and, and running them in two different ways, but incorporating them together would be more realistic and potentially have some cool applications. Overall, I thought this was a really cool project and I hope to make some improvements in the future. Thanks for watching.